Hey, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve and welcome to typing assignment number two results. I had a great time with this project reading and going through your pieces and they were really great. Let's talk about them. So all told, we had 21 respondents to this second typing assignment. And unfortunately, one of you guys, uh, your link you sent me was a Google shortcut link and it didn't work. So I tried to contact you several different ways and I was unable, I, I sent a mail, a message to you via Flickr, the Flickr mail app is the only way I could find a contact back to you. But unfortunately, I didn't get a response. So uh, hopefully you'll have a better luck next time. But uh, anyways, the rest of you, for the 20 other people uh, that were able to get me links to their images, thanks a lot. And uh, I know we had some technical issues on this one. I'm going to uh, go over the results of all your uh, entries in this video. And then I'm going to make another video later on in the next day or so giving you a typing assignment number three and also in that other video I'm going to talk a little bit about the technical issues we might have had and how we can kind of overcome those in the future. So without any further delay let's get into the results for typing assignment number two. So in this second typing assignment the assignment was to type a one uh, page piece on what you find valuable or unique about uh, writing via the typewriter. And I really love this. I loved all the responses. And a lot of the uh, uh, things that you guys came up with are similar to my own experience, but there were also some new insights that I learned as to what you guys find valuable or important or unique about typewriters as writing tools. And that's what I love about these uh, typing assignments is you learn from each other. We all learn from each other. And so I really encourage all of you to go through the video, pause it if you can, and uh, read carefully everybody's inputs. Uh, so let's go through and uh, talk about them all here.
I liked S.B. Bohanga's uh, piece titled The Value of the Typewriter as a Tool. I liked the comparison he made between the typewriter and the computer as tortoise and hare. Uh, small batch versus large batch distiller. I like that imagery. And I like his phrase, typewriters are a truly humanitizing and artful tool. Well spoken. I really like that. And then John Monroe's piece, uh, I liked his ideas of, he recounts some personal history from childhood up to adulthood of being interested in publishing since he was a young child. Um, I like the story of how his dad would use typewriters at home and would even not only write letters but would write haikus on the typewriter, which I think is very cool for a child to see his dad creating like that. Um, I like what he says about, um, and I can relate to how computers uh, change one's creative style. Um, he says, no longer was I writing, then thinking. And he says, the typewriter has enabled me to isolate my creative writing mind from my critical editing brain. And that's really important, the idea that there's two different brain functionalities. One is the creative mode and the other one is the analytical editing, critical thinking mode. And it's nice to separate out those two with a, with a unique, unique tool for each one. The typewriter for creating, the computer for uh, analytical and editing. I like Andrew Nichols' piece, uh, The Uniqueness of the Typewriter. I like where he talks about the typewriter as first a gadget, a mechanical device, which we can all relate to as collectors and uh, f fiddlers with typewriters. Um, I like his idea of the history of the typewriter. They, they represent technological history and each one has a personal history. I like what he says about the, the, it, it is a no distractive form of creating. And uh, I like uh, what he says regarding neatness uh, of the typewritten page versus many of us who suffer from sloppy handwriting, uh, me included. Um, I like his phrase, instant tangible access. You can just sit down at the typewriter and begin creating immediately. And what he says, I can resonate with, something amazing about starting with a blank paper and ending with an instant written poem being able to create instant poetry on the typewriter. How true. In John Campbell's piece, he talks about the most unique aspect of writing via typewriter. Uh, no distractions. And he, he has this interesting idea of rhythm and sound. There's kind of a musical quality to the typewriter. Um, and he likens the hard copy of the typed page to the photographic print in terms of longevity of the physical media. That's a really great idea. Thanks a lot, John. And then Preston English, um, his Occidental Obsolescence, a great title. Um, he says, I'm not a collector of typewriters, but a writer. Uh, he says, it's an addiction. I don't smoke, I accumulate. And we're both Luddites, we're both obsolete. I love that. He's referring to uh, both the typewriter user and the computer user because computers are instantly obsolete. It's just that the users of computers don't see themselves <laughs> as being operating already obsolete equipment. But uh, I, I thought that was a really cool piece. In Darren Sundstrom's piece, Why the Typewriter, he has this really great observation about what word processing does uh, to writers. And he says, we all became dazzled by our delete keys. I love that phrasing. And it forces, it forcing us to become obsessed perfectionists. How many of you can relate to the professed, uh, the obsessed perfectionism of constantly having to fiddle with a word processing document at the same time as you're trying to write it. I can relate to that so well. And then uh, Weimark's uh, Journeyman Without Masters, he really makes a strong case for typing as a specialized skill. Being able to produce perfect copy from a manual typewriter is a specialty skill that required many, many hours of 
practice to perfect. And he says, an army of trained typists carried the former century into maturity. And he's referring to, you know, the, the first half of the, of the 20th century and how much of a role uh, trained typists played in the civilization. Andy Kev's piece uh, that uh, he wrote was really cool. He has this uh, phrase in there, words matter. That is so true, Andy, I agree. And he says, the typewriter stands as a sentinel for the lost art of written personal letters. And he makes a strong case in this piece for uh, handwritten or hand typed letters uh, as a, a great form of communication a lost art, if you will, something much more valuable than simply sending somebody an email or a text or a tweet. And David Wells's piece, uh, Think with a Typewriter, he says, use a typewriter, slow down and think about your writing. He makes a great case that the typewriter forces us to become better thinkers and therefore better writers. And he has a great line in here. He says, the best writing teachers have their students use a pen instead of a pencil because the evil eraser is the six-year-old child's backspace key. Now this was a great phrase. I love this idea that if you force writing students to not easily erase and correct their work, then it makes them stronger writers. And that is exactly what the typewriter does as compared to the word processor. Great concept there. And David Randall's uh, Typewriters as Writing Tools, he has, uh, he refers to Julia Cameron's uh, book, The Artist's Way, which by the way, I have somewhere and I must not have studied it because this is great, what he says, the idea of what she calls morning pages, which uh, uh, David and his wife started out using handwritten form to do their morning pages, kind of a writing um, form of meditation and a good way to start your day creatively. Well, they uh, migrated to uh, typing their morning pages. And he says, as you sip your morning tea or coffee, you're a real writer with a real writer's tool. So true, David, well done. And then uh, David C. and his Why Typewriters says that fiddling with a typewriter while writing is part of the writing process. David makes an argument here that typewriters are mechanical objects and we like to fiddle with them mechanically as much as we do like to write with them. And there is an artistic aspect to typewriters that each page is uniquely different with its own imperfections. And so each page is a unique work of art in a sense. And he implies that you could type the same words multiple times on multiple pages and each one would be a unique work. That's a great idea, David, I love it. And then Paul's uh, piece, The Power of Linear Thinking, he talks about uh, typewriters as writing tools. There's no going back. The only direction is forward. And of course, he's not only referring to the literal direction of the carriage as you type, but the fact that uh, you can't easily go back and change what you've done. So he talks about clarity of thought. What you want to get it right or close to right the first time. So it forces you to have more clarity of thought. And writing as a physical act. Uh, each typewriter's design affects the user in a different way. It's a profound reminder of the effects of engineering on human creativity. And again, this is a common theme that's recurred over and over in these pieces, is how much uh, the physical design of the typewriter and its engineering interacts with the writing process. And Eric Bergstrom makes a strong case for the appreciation of the mechanical precision of typewriters, where he says, they are almost an extension of your hands as though the words squirt out of the ends of your fingers. I love that imagery, the words squirting out the ends of your fingers. Um, Joe Bailey in his piece, The Right Tool for the Right Job, uh, makes a strong case that computers are tools 
ideally suited for editing and publishing, whereas writing is a physical thing, similar to painting or sculpting. What a great insight that writing is like painting or sculpting, it's physical. And typewriters are a tool meant specifically for writing. That is so succinct, so wonderful. And then Michael Rasmussen in his typewriting, Music and Memories, again, he makes a case that typewriting makes music of your thoughts. He likens the typewriter to a musical instrument, and he says it's mostly a rhythm instrument, which is very interesting, uh, that I hadn't really thought of the connection between typewriting and music and how it might foster the creative process. But a typewriter, he says, insists on some reflection. How true indeed. And Michael Kitchen's piece, uh, Typing It's Good For You, uh, he says that writing by computer helps mask our own deficiencies, our deficiencies in spelling and grammar, etc. Um, he, <laughs> he has this great line, he says, uh, word processing had made me write crap faster. <laughs> so he was a more productive producer of crap writing on a computer, whereas uh, the lesson for him was more first drafts on the typewriter. In other words, higher quality output, less volume. Um, and this was a common theme that I saw over and over again in these pieces was that uh, the fact that the typewriter slows you down is actually a good thing because it, it helps you to produce higher quality content earlier on in the writing process. Um, then Kevin Kay talks about, he uses the image of writing as bleeding onto the page, and he has a, a very personal account of the struggle of the writer to get the ink onto the page, the words onto the page, and he's referencing indirectly that old adage about writing is easy, all you have to do is sit down at the typewriter and bleed, and for him, the problem was the blood wasn't flowing enough. And he says, a typewriter is the best tool to transform your thoughts into the written word. It's the fastest way to write. It's faster than handwriting, and it's just as fast as a computer without, of course, all the negatives like the distractions. So I can definitely relate to that. And then Samuel Huff's uh, piece, he says, I know that I produce more quality work when I use my typewriter. He says, the typewriters require a whole lot more thought before you press a key. And that is so true, that you have to think before you act. And he likens the computer to a pencil in that the output is easily erasable and changeable, whereas where he likens the typewriter is more like a pen, where it's more permanent, less changeable. Now, Diane Mayer's piece, Typewriters as Writing Tools, she has a really personal account of the um, effect that staring at, at backlit computer screens for hours and hours, the negative effect that can have on your person and on your writing. She is a person who writes professionally on a computer all day long at work, and for her, typewriters are represent no distractions from technology. It's focused writing without the distractions. It's not staring at backlit screens, which she again says is very unenjoyable. And she likes to type at home on upright standard machines because they just work and they're rugged. And here's the thing I really like what she said. She likes to close her eyes and let the story flow from my mind to my fingertips, to the typewriter keys. That is so succinct and beautiful of a phrase, and it again is reiterated over and over again in these pieces how the typewriter is this mechanical interface between your fingertips and the creativity itself. And finally, John M. in uh, his piece, What Makes Typewriters Unique from Other Forms of Writing, he says, typewriters produce the final product in real time as you write. Uh, he says the writing process demands solitude in order to effectively work. And so he, he likes the idea of portable typewriters as being ideal 
for venturing off to write in solitude uh, without the distractions of the world. And he has this great phrase, typewriters are time machines. They are timelessly relevant even today. Wow, you guys did so well on this assignment. And it's interesting the commonalities uh, between everybody's uh, likening of typewriters as writing tools. A lot of things very common to everybody. The lack of distractions, the mechanical nature of the machine, the focused writing, forcing you to make higher quality words and, and, and sentences up front, with knowing that you're working without a net and that uh, you uh, don't have the luxury of autocorrect and spell check and all that. But there was also some very unique ideas, like for instance the idea of the musical quality of typewriters and the uh, relationship between the typewriter and the writer itself. So I, I thought it was a great uh, job you guys did. Okay, in the next video, um, which should come out uh, in the next uh, day or so, I'm going to be covering uh, typing assignment number three. And also in that video, I will be talking about some of the technical issues that both you might have had and I might have had in getting this process to work and maybe ways that we can overcome them. And so until next time, happy creating. And I love uh, what you guys have done with these pieces and your interaction. And I, I might also want to pause here and say that before we go, that I know for some of you that it represents a real challenge getting these pieces put out every week, especially given the hectic nature of everybody's lives. And I do appreciate that. I did have one or two people who asked for more time. Um, I was tempted to put off the, the deadline for another week, but I went ahead and decided to go ahead with this. Um, I know I've given you guys a deadline of Sunday evening mountain time in the U.S. for submitting your pieces, but uh, realistically I know that may not be possible for everyone. And so as late as Monday morning here, I've uh, also received more entries which I have included in the piece. And so um, going forward, I know that writing for some of you, being able to do this every week is a challenge, but I also know that to be writers, we do have to find ways to fit writing into our lives. And this is one of the things that I remember from uh, Stephen King's book called On Writing, one of the best books he ever wrote, and it's nonfiction. Uh, but he says, if you want to be a writer, you'll find the time to write. And so I think it is a reasonable challenge uh, to continue with a weekly deadline especially given that we're, we're doing one page assignments. So it's not like you're doing an entire term paper or something. So anyways, with that said, I thank you very much for your participation. It blesses me to read your work, to see your creativity, to see you becoming more creative as writers and using these special tools we call typewriters for that process. Until next time, when I give you typing assignment number three, you guys have yourselves a great day.